Like stop allowing this to happen to yourself because so many of us, we get placed in being a person we're not meant to be because we allow people to tell us who we should be. We allow people to tell us that our life will never be the same without them. We allow people to tell, you, tell them we're never going to be something. We allow our parents to tell us that we ain't going to never be ish in our life. I get that. And we believe the commentary that's put on our life. We believe the commentary that's put on our soul. I want everybody to write in the chat, no more. Everybody write in the chat right now, no more. Okay, because we are no longer going to allow our life to be controlled by these outside things, these outside people that don't care about us, that will never say a prayer for us, that don't want the best for us. We're going to stop allowing these people to put their truth on our life, to put their lies. It's their truth, but it's still their lies because it's a lot of us on our life. We're going to stop allowing them to put their story of who we should be on our life. We're going to stop allowing them to control the pen that we should be writing our our, our book of life with, we should stop allowing them to control the pen and allowing them to keep on controlling who we should be. So I want to tell you right now, as I said in that quote, whoever's trying to give you that nonsense, get rid of that, get rid of them. Whoever's trying to give you that less, get rid of that, get rid of them. Whoever's trying to make you feel like you're not worth it, get rid of that, get rid of them. You cannot afford your life to keep your life around those things no more. Do you hear me? Kim said no more. Cindy said no more. Caitlin said no more. Right, Tiffany said no more, and it has to be like that, y'all. And I know we've been talking about this for a long time, but this is the year where you say no more. This is the year where you say, you know what? Yeah, you might say what I'm not gonna be. You might say not. Say, you might say what I never will become. But you have no say so in my life. You didn't can create me, as I said the other day. You didn't create me, so you can't control me. You can't tell me what God has for me. You can't tell me about God's favor on my life. Your opinion has nothing to do with God's favor. Your opinion has no power over my life. Your criticism, your negativity, your hate, your fill in the blank cannot stop what God has for me. Some people want to make you lose your power. Wants to make you feel powerless, wants to make you feel worthless by putting a lie on your life. They try to put a label that you're not enough. They try to tell you that your life will never be the same without them. Good. It's going to be better. Somebody tried to tell me that before in my journey. Like, oh, your life is never going to be the same without me. Great. It's going to be better. Right? God will bring me back better than what I lost. Write that in the chat. God will bring you back better than what you lost. Y'all share this right now. Let's turn it up in here. I need y'all to turn it up. I need your energy right now. I need y'all to turn it up in here. I'm about to read this to you, but I need y'all to get the energy up in here. If you haven't shared this, why not? Press share. Your share matters. It matters, it matters, it matters. So I want to read this to you really quick. Mary, thanks for the stars. Ash Ash said no more. Uh, Miss Ortiz said no more. Crystal said, whoo, I love it. I'm going to read this to you from Protect Your Peace. All right, if you got your book, pull your book out and read it with me. One of the reasons I am where I'm at in my life is because I've never been and never will be a duplicate. I'm me and forever will be. Okay? I'm me and forever will be. Back in 2009, when I started working in, self, in the self-development space, the space that I'm in now, it was unusual or even unpopular to look like me and speak like me. Many people tried to change me on my way up, but I kept doing my thing because it was coming from my heart. I knew my worth. I knew my purpose. Whew. I knew my worth. I knew my purpose. Whew. I knew my worth. I knew my purpose. Eliminating comparison connected me to my clarity. Haven't you heard before that in order to make a difference, you have to be different, move different, think different, act different. Maybe that thing that no one understands, that thing that God placed in your heart is exactly what you are supposed to be doing and sharing. You weren't called to be like everyone else. You weren't called to please everyone else. You weren't called to conform to everyone else. And nobody else has to, has to approve your calling, my friend. What does this have to do with you? Check this out. Visionaries are no different than you and me. They just turn everyone else's voice down in order to become great at listening to their own. That is the true pathway to peace, my friend. Wherever those ideas of who you should be. If you want to experience peace in your life, everybody write peace right now. If you want to experience peace in your life, please, this is very important. If you want to experience peace in your life, understand this truth. The true pathway to peace, my friend, is this. Whoever those ideas of who you should be, and let me just stop right here and let me talk about this because there's a lot of people in this world that have ideas of who you should be. And a lot of people, their ideas of who you should be, 
is beneficial to them. They want you to be something that's beneficial to them. Some people, and not everybody, but some people want you to be somebody that they can use. That's who you should be. You should be the person that they can use. You should be the person that is a shell of themselves. You should be the person that shrinks and doesn't embrace your greatness because they can use that. They can manipulate that. They can take advantage of that. They can use you. So some people, their idea of who you should be is a beneficial to, is a beneficial is benefit to them, not to your life. So be very careful of the people who tell you what you shouldn't do, what you shouldn't be, especially when it comes to your better life. If somebody is telling you not to go live your best life, if somebody is, is trying to keep you from doing something that's going to better your life, run fast, run quick, delete them from your life. Love some people from a distance. I'm going to be straight up with you because people who truly love you will want to see the best for you. That's facts. That is not an idea. That is not something to argue. That is not something to debate. Somebody who truly loves you wants to see the best for you. They're not going to put a limitation on you. They're not going to put an insecurity on you. They're not going to make you feel like going to live your best life is impossible. They want to see you win. But some of us, we're around people who are, in, who are in competition with us silently. Some of you got some people around you that's in silent competition. You wonder why they don't cheer when you win. You wonder why they don't support you when you're trying to do better. You, only, you, wonder, you wonder why they only show up when you're at your worst. Because some people want you to do better, but they don't want you to do better than them. Some people want to keep you at your worst because they don't want you to do better at them. Some people don't want you to get exposed to who you can be. And keep you with who you should be to them because they don't want you to move forward with your life. And some of us, we're around people literally that literally want to keep us in the lesser version of ourselves because that's the place where we're beneficial to them. That's the place where they can take advantage of your life. That's the place where they can manipulate you. That's the place where they can use you. That's the place as long as you don't think more of yourself, they can take more from you. As long as you don't think more of yourself and wake up to your worth. They're determining your worth. They're telling you what you're worth. Right? You're priceless, but you allow them to treat you like you are wholesale. Can we talk tonight? Can we be real tonight? And it's facts. And it's not everybody in your life. So don't go on this spree of kicking everybody out your life. That's very immature. I'm not telling you to do that. But there's some things in your life that you know that you know don't want your best life. And some of you got your best friends that don't want the best for you. They never show up for you, never support you. They only around you when you got problems. They only around you when you're doing worse. They never want to hear anything going good in your life. They don't champion. They don't cheer for your accomplishments, your promotions, any of that. They just want to bring gossip and drama to you. That's the only time they're around you. Only time they want to conversate with you. Only time they want to connect with you. And those people that you're around, right? You got to change that, man. You got to change that. But let me get back to this book. Whoever those ideas of who you should be come from, your parents, your friends, a partner, you hear me? Your parents, a friends, a partner. I ain't ex leaving nobody out, right? Whoever those ideas of who you should be come from, parents, ideas. I mean, parents, friends, partners. Whatever you're seeing out there in the world, get rid of them. And that's a hey, that's pretty harsh. But this book, I unapologetically. So I'm being very unapologetic in this book. You know, you need to. I'm willing to bet. They've been feeling uncomfortable for a minute now. Stop worrying about the approval of others. No more people pleasing, pleasing please. That's a tongue twister. No more people pleasing, please. Others are going to judge you regardless. Forget them all. Make the right moves for yourself. Demand your worth and walk into your greatness. Everybody in the chat, write those words. Demand your worth and walk into your greatness. And I want you to write it like this. I am demanding my worth and I am walking into my greatness. Okay? No more people pleasing. Please. This is the year where you let some people down. I just did an interview today on TV and they literally played that video. This is the year where you let some people down. You might say, Trent, who do I need to let down? The wrong people. All the right people, however you want to view it. But the people that just want to, that just don't want, the people we've been talking about tonight, let those people down. Because when you choose, you're going to let them down. When you choose your peace, you're going to let them down. When you choose not to settle for less anymore, you're going to let them down. They're going to feel a certain type of way. Let them feel a certain type of way because you should be tired of feeling the way you're feeling. Let them feel a certain type of way. Let them feel like, oh man, this person changed or this person switched up. Let them feel that because you've been feeling a certain type of way for far too long. You've been feeling not yourself for far too long. You've been suffering for far too long. Let them feel that way they feel. If they feel like, oh, man, this person changed. I mean, this person switched up. This person ain't the same. This person don't come around. If they, if you cut them off, I guarantee you, they probably handed you the scissors. If you cut them off, 
We don't just cut people off for stupid reasons. That's immature. We don't do that. We too grown for that. But if you're in a place in your life where you cut somebody off, I'm pretty sure they've handed you the scissors multiple times. You probably should have cut them off years ago. You probably been holding the scissors, but your good heart kept you from going snip, snip, snip. Your good heart was like, ah, I'm going to give them another chance. You know what I mean? I'm going to see the best in them. But then they gave you the reason to cut them off for the last time. And so some of us were so afraid to let those people down that don't give a damn about letting us down. And I don't understand it. Actually, I do understand it because I'm that type of person. But I got to a point in my life where I'm protecting my peace. I got to a point in my life where I'm unapologetic. I got to a point in my life where I got to be the best me for those that need me to be. I'm not going to be a shell of myself and my kids don't experience my best me because I'm trying to please everybody else around me. I refuse that. My kids are my priority. My family is my priority. I'm not going to sit here and be a shell of myself and be afraid to offend people because I choose myself and I choose to say no. I choose to set boundaries. I choose not to be a part of certain things anymore. I choose not to come around certain things. I choose to not be in certain environments. If that's letting you down, then my friend, I'm going to let you down. It is what it is because I'm not letting myself down no more. And some of y'all been letting yourself down for the last five years, six years, four years, and you've been hurting in your life because you're so afraid to let somebody else down. Y'all share this right now. Danielle, I see your comment. It's showing up. You're so afraid to let people down. And you've been letting yourself down. How has that been working out for your peace? How has that been working out for your mental health? Let me know in the chat. How has that been working out? For your mental health and for your peace? How has it been working for your happiness? How has it been working for your joy? How has it been working for your self-love? How has it been working out? Because your good heart says, no, don't let them down. If you choose yourself, you're going to let them down. Really? Are you really letting somebody down when you're choosing yourself? You'll never let the people down that really care about you when you choose you for a change. I tell people around me all the time, choose you. I had a person in my life today that Went on a spa day. And I was like, choose you today. You need to. Didn't let me down. I was championing them. Go. Don't talk to me. Don't text me about anything. Go take your day for yourself. I was getting mad that they were texting me. This is your day. Go take it. Go enjoy it. It's yours. Don't worry about me. You're not letting me down. I'm lifting you up. A person. Mm, my, there we go. A person that cares about you. And listen to me. We about to go in. A person that cares about you. You're never going to let them down. By doing what's best for you. They're going to lift you up. They're not going to feel let down. They're going to lift you up. They're going to lift you up. They're going to champion you. They're going to push you to do more things to make you happy. To do more things that make you to see, succeed. To do more things that put you in position to live a better life. They're going to champion that. They're going to lift you up. So you don't, need, you, you don't need to be worried about letting somebody down that cares about you. And I understand the perspective. Like, don't take it out of context. I'm not telling you to let people down on purpose by doing something toxic in your life. I'm not having, I'm not, this is not the conversation tonight. This is not the topic that we're on. I'm talking about some of us, we are literally letting ourselves down because we're so afraid of what comes with choosing ourselves, what comes from actually owning who we are, what comes with actually knowing our worth, what comes with actually saying, you know what, I'm not going to be used no more, bro. I'm tired of being used. I'm tired of this same cycle of nonsense, BS. I'm tired of it. And we're afraid to let people down. But you're letting yourself down. And you've been letting yourself down so much that you lost hope in your life. You let, your down so, you let yourself down so much that you become hopeless. I want to give you permission, not that you need it from me, but I want to give you permission to let some people down this year. Yep. Because the only people that you will let down are the people that really don't care about you. Let them down. Right? They call your phone. They no longer have access to you because all they did is want to use you. All they do is want to take advantage of you. And now they number block. Maybe it's social media. Boop. Block. Because all they do is just talk about what you're doing, make you feel insecure about what you're doing, put more doubt in your life, put more fears in your soul, make you doubt yourself more. And yep, when you block them, just going to let them down. They're going to feel a certain type of way. When they call your phone, and it's blocked, they're going to feel a certain type of way. So be it. What's the alternative? You keep losing yourself for somebody who can care less about losing you? They just want control over you. They don't care about losing you. They really ain't hurt that you blocked them. They just hurt that you ain't, they ain't got access to you no more. They can't control you no more. They don't have the power over you no more. See, some of these people got power trips. You think they care about you. They just want the power over you. It makes them feel powerful. 
And that's not just intimate relationships. That's all, that's across the board. You're going to let some people down by no longer going in a certain environment no more. Maybe you say, you know what? I'm not going out no more. I'm not turning up no more. I'm not being around this no more because I got some other priorities in my life I need to prioritize. And the people that really want to see you win, they're going to be like, yeah, go do it, man. This can wait. Go live your best life. When I chose me, when I chose to go live my best life and start this rehab time stuff, there were some people out there that didn't get it. There's some people that I, that I let down. Oh, man, Trent switched up. He changed on us. Oh, he don't want to come around no more. He's soft. You saw that motivational stuff he making, like them soft videos about know your worth and self-worth. Oh, yeah, Trent, he, he's soft. Yep, I let them down because they no longer had access to me like they used to. Yep, they tried to put they, put they code to come back into my heart and my life, and it was like, broom, red. It wasn't green no more. <laughs> they tried to put the code to access me again, and it didn't work. The code changed, right? The terms updated. I mean, you need to update some terms. And when you update some terms, some people are going to automatically, automatically uh, exit themselves out of your life when the terms are updated. Because some people don't want to go by the terms. You can update your terms of life anytime that you want. Anytime that you want. You can put your terms of life how you want to put them. You can set the standards for your life. You can elevate your standards. You can go by the rules that you want to, and the guidelines. It's your life. Don't let people put their guidelines and rules on you and make you feel like you're doing too much or make you feel like that you're, you're, you're too much or make you feel like that, that, that you changed or switched up, whatever it may be. Because I'm going to tell you right now, some people got access to your life that need to be denied, right? You let some people in your heart that don't need to be there no more. In your presence, in your vicinity that don't need to be there no more. Bad vibes, bad energy, you letting them in. At some point, they need to put the code in. They need to boop, 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 boop. No, no access is read. They need to like call you and be like, hey, did you change the, the password? Like, it's not working. You know what I mean? You'd be like, hey, did I put the, what's the pattern? They, they start tripping out. Nah, because it changed. And it's okay to change. It's okay to give yourself permission to be free from the nonsense, to be free from the toxic stuff. But the people who, who really rock with me, they're like, hey, T, like, go do it, bro. You got a gift. You got a calling. You don't need this. Go do it. They kept me from doing other things in my life. When I wanted to do it, they held me accountable to go live my best life. Again, the people that want to see your best, they want you to be your best. Realize that. So a lot of times people are going to expose who they really are in your life. And you're going to see their true colors going to start to wear off. Right? They forget to, to redo their paint job of those, of those fake colors. And the true colors start to show. When you choose yourself, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like those true colors start to, to, start to, to, start to get very, very visible. Right? That, that, that fake overcoat paint. Of fakeness, it starts to just wear off. And you start to see people for their true colors. And what they'll try to do, they try to recoat, <laughs> recoat those colors with some fake things to make you think that they really ain't like that. To make you think that, oh no, you're just tripping or you're just, you know, I, I really care about you, right? They try to give you, they try to put the coat of fake back on their life. They try to paint the coat back over. But then you know what? You start to see it for what it really is. Nah, bro, I see your true colors. I see it. I can see through all of that. Right? The truth is translucent. I see it. You can disguise it. You can hide it. But the energy don't lie. But you got to start making your life a priority, man. Life is too short to spend another day at war with yourself. Life is too short to spend another day at war with yourself, especially when the war with yourself is direct reflection of what you're choosing outside of yourself. And for most of us, that is true. The war within ourselves is caused not because we're dealing with internal things by default. It's because we're allowing the external things to determine how we feel about ourselves. And we're choosing to start a war within ourselves based upon the war that other people are trying to put in our life. The war of loneliness, the war of lack of self-worth, the war of self, all the things. The war of non-confidence. And it's put in our life. So what's it going to be, man? I know I'll be on here just like, just giving y'all that real. I, I know y'all been, some of y'all been rocking with me since 2009 on here, but it's just like, we, you got to make a stand. You got to stand for something. It starts tonight. It starts tonight. Like stand for something and make that decision. You know, when I wrote that in the book, protect your peace, you can get on Amazon, type peace in the comments or go to Amazon, type protect your peace. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate you for the, yeah, I appreciate you for uh, putting that quote out there. Yeah. Life is too short to start another war with, uh, to spend another day at war with yourself. But it was me in this journey. 
drowning out the outside noise so I can listen to my truth inside of me. And one thing that I've done very well, and I'm going to tell you this as we leave here tonight. I start, <laughs> I start marching at the beat of my own drum. Boom, 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 right? <laughs> just boom, 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 right? Just marching at the beat of my own drum. And what's crazy is that when you start to march at the beat of your own drum, some people ain't going to like the sound. Right. When you start marching at the beat of your own drum and that drum is sounding like worth, <laughs> that drum is sounding like greatness, that's something, that drum is sounding like self-confidence, self-love, some people, it's going to annoy the hell out of them. They're like, turn that down. Right? Change. That's terrible. Because it's going that, that, that sound is not in alignment with the frequency that they own. See, they own that hate frequency. They own that abusive frequency. They own that manipulation frequency. So when that... That worth, that truth, that love frequency starts to, that sound starts to play. It's going to bother them. But the people that really care about you, the people that really want you to win, the people that really want you to live your best life, you start marching at the beat of your own drum. And they love the sound just like you love the sound. They proud of you. They sit back there jamming with you. They sit back there bobbing their head. They sit back up there bobbing out with you. They love the sound too. They tell you to play louder. Keep going. I love it because they really care about you and they really want you to win. I'm a guy that I love when people march at the beat of their own sound. I'm a guy when people really choose themselves and protect their peace and demand their worth. I'm a guy that champions that. I love it. Even if I don't agree with it, I still love it. I love to see people walk in their authentic self. Not the toxic version, but the purposeful, the greatness version of themselves. And so I want to give you permission, not that you need my permission, but I want to give you permission to get permission to yourself to march at the beat of your own drum. And I want you to start loving the sound. Don't let people make you change the sound. Don't people make you don't let people make you feel like the sound is annoying. Don't make, don't let people make you feel like, you know, the sound ain't right. You offbeat. Don't let people make you feel like that. Find your rhythm. And the more you love the sound of your own beat, your own drum, <laughs> the more you create a symphony in your life that's wrapped up in peace and greatness and fulfillment. But it starts with you. Marching at the beat of your own drum. All right? So join the drum line of your life. Put your, is it called a bass drum? Put your bass drum on. Think it's right. Some of you on the band can tell me. Right? Band camp. Put your put, put your bass drum on and start. I'm, well, I'm about to say something. It would have been terrible to say on live. People would have copied it. I would say, in, no, I'm not going to say that. In March to that. I'm not going to say what I was about to say because some of y'all be like, ah, in March to that. I grew up in New Orleans. They had second lines all the time. And I always admired the second line going down the street, just marching at the beat of their own drum, playing their own sound. And people loved it because they loved it. But like I said, then in every single video, it all starts with you. Christine, I'm making you cry. I hope that it's happy tears, baby girl. I really do. And I believe in you, my friend. I really do. But I want you to start marching at the beat of your own drum, right? That drum that's wrapped up in the sound that God gave you, right? That's what, what I mean in your own. I'm not talking about like it's all about you, but God is giving you a, giving you, God is giving you the music sheet of your life, right? He's giving you a sound that's only been created for you. And a lot of us, we never play that sound. We never honor that sound. We never are committed to that sound. But tonight's the night, man, where you march at the beat of your drum and you start to love the sound. I really want that for you. Tonight's the night that you have more fear of letting yourself down than anything else. Tonight's the night that maybe for some of you, not all of you, but you let some people down. And I get it, it sucks. It doesn't always feel good, it hurts. 
doesn't feel good. I've cried letting some people down. Some tears behind the scenes. Like, man, like it hurt. But I knew it was going to hurt more if I kept letting myself down. I knew in letting myself down, there was a bigger payoff of pain. Because there's people that need me to be the best me. Especially for people directly in my life that need me to be the best me. And I can't allow outside things to keep me from being that person to those people. I love you, man. I really do. And I want to say thank you again for everybody supporting me. Uh, again, if you got a book today in the mail, it didn't just come from nowhere. Uh, I sent it to you. And just take it as a gift. Take it as a thank you for supporting me. You know, I couldn't give a book to all millions of you. You know, I don't have that type of money. But I give it. I gave it to a few of you. And, um, I hope that you appreciate it. Maybe, I don't know, most of you already ordered the book anyway. Maybe you can gift it to somebody that you care about. Um, maybe you can leave it somewhere. You feel like it'll be purposeful. But uh, I did that for you. Uh, just to say thank you. And I show up on here for these lives, obviously to spread a message, but also to connect with y'all. Stacy said, I don't know my worth. You helped me realize I deserve more. Yeah, Stacy, and I didn't know my worth. For sure, Stacy. Like, yeah, it's tough in this world not to know your worth at times. I question my worth at times. And tomorrow's podcast, by the way, go listen to it. If you're a person, just drop a, a, a heart emoji in the comments. If you're a person that has struggled or is struggling with, and I've struggled with this, I called it on the podcast, and it's not a like a technical clinical term, but it's a term I made up, but it's called plateau depression. And what that means is like you hit a peak in your life, in a in a in a in a section of your life. Like so like for some people it might be like, I'm a mom, I'm a dad, I I'm a I work at this job, I have this position, or you know, I hit this level of success. And have you ever felt like, is this it? Like, even in your success, even in like the goodness, you still feel like, is this it? Like, am I just a dad? Like, I'm just going to be like this, doing this for the rest of my life, like working to make ends meet or working hard, even though I love it. But it's like, is this it? And if you're a person that's ever felt stuck, then this podcast tomorrow is for you. Um, it's something I've never really talked about. I give you some strategies, some ideas, how to change it, how to help with it. But I think it's very powerful because so many people deal with plateau depression. Like even though we love our kids, we love our spouses, we love our job, like we love these things. But it's like you start thinking like, am I going to do this for the rest of my life? Like, am I just here to take care of people? Am I just here to do this? Or is there more? And once we lose the hunger for more, depression starts to creep in our life even in the success. And I talk about something that I feel like is very powerful and I'll share it here and I'll dive in it. I'll dive deeper in it tomorrow on my podcast. But routines, right? Some of us have routines that have helped us be successful, but hasn't helped us experience peace in our soul, right? It's successful to our life, but not successful to our soul. And I challenge you to break the routine. If you're a person that's experienced success in life, but you still feel empty because you don't feel success in your soul. Maybe it's time to break the routine. Maybe it's time to switch it up, change something, do something different, bring some more excitement around your life. 